Uh, good morning. And can I also start by offering my condolences to uh, those uh, that lost loved ones overnight? Uh, today, the, the Premier has outlined the three-stage roadmap for New South Wales, our blueprint for freedom uh, right across the state. Uh, we previously have announced the 70% roadmap, uh, and that will, we believe, uh, kick in on the 11th of October. The only change to the 70% roadmap will be that we are now moving regional travel, so those in Greater Metro Sydney travelling to the regions until not until we get to 80%. So that will be a change that was originally flagged at 70% no longer. It will actually start at 80%. The changes from 70 to 80% in the roadmap are really five key areas. Community sport, uh, 10 visitors to the home, um, of course, uh, vertical drinking, uh, which is something that uh, we, we know as we head into spring and summer, it's something that the, the public would like to see. Uh, no caps on funerals and weddings and no caps on personal services such as hairdressers. So that is the key change, uh, again, for uh, the 80% roadmap. And as the Premier touched on, our final stage on the 1st of December, uh, which takes us about four, four and a half, five weeks beyond the 80% mark, uh, that's when we, re we release all restrictions and we apply a two square metre rule across the board and allow a level of freedom for both vaccinated and unvaccinated. The message to the unvaccinated is, is that you will not achieve any further freedom unless you get vaccinated. And a further, further and final message to regional New South Wales. There are parts of regional New South Wales that are currently open. Uh, the 70% roadmap does apply to the whole state. So there will be individuals in regional rural New South Wales who choose not to be vaccinated who will lose their freedoms on the 11th of October. So my message to everybody in regional and rural New South Wales is to continue to get vaccinated. We're seeing vaccination rates climb right across the state, including the regions, which I'm very proud of. And I say thank you to those regional communities. Uh, we have a, a number of walking clinics without bookings right across the state. Uh, of course, with Moderna coming online, the additional Pfizer supply, and AstraZeneca in abundance. There is no excuse in regional rural New South Wales not to get vaccinated. So again, my call out to the regions, let's keep climbing with those vaccination rates. A fantastic number so far, but let's not fall behind because Freedom Day is only a couple of weeks away. Thank you. Premier, Mr Barilaro just said that the message to the unvaccinated is that you will not achieve any further freedom until you get vaccinated. But under this plan, on the 1st of December, anti-vaxxers will have exactly the same freedoms as everybody else and a raft of more freedoms right. introduced. Uh, but it's, it's very important to note that in un unlike most places in the world, if you're not vaccinated, you'll have to wait at least four or five weeks after we've already hit the 80% double dose rate in order to participate in things that the rest of us can participate in. We anticipate, fingers crossed, uh, by the time that third stage of reopening happens on the 1st of December, we anticipate, I mean, Dr Chan have got our fingers crossed to have 92, 93% of our adult population completely vaccinated. So that is a big high jump for people to have to go through if you're not vaccinated. The message is, if you want to be able to have a meal uh, with friends, if you want to welcome people into your home, you have to get vaccinated. That's a simple message. And if you don't, if you choose not to, that's OK, but you'll have to wait a, a long time before you can participate in other activity. In most other places in the world, uh, the rate is lower, that people have to wait less if they're not vaccinated. We're taking a very conservative approach. We don't want to overwhelm our hospital system. Uh, we need to be clear that once we start reopening at 70% double dose, our case numbers will increase. There'll be more mobility, more activity, but what will protect us is that rate of vaccination. And I personally will take personal responsibility when I'm meeting with my parents, even though we're all fully vaccinated, because the vulnerable are still prone to getting the disease and ending up in hospital. And we need to make sure that all those safety measures are in place. So the strongest message to those that are unvaccinated is you're going to have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks. In fact, you're going to have to wait several months before you can do anything. I mean, most of us uh, who are fully vaccinated will be able to participate in community life, in uh, hospitality in two weeks' time. Those of you who are unvaccinated will have to wait at least another couple of months before that happens. Can I just follow up 